Good afternoon and welcome to episode 648. And the topic today is the secret oh, actually so, excuse me. The topic today is the secret. Oh, no, I say the right way around. Let's start again. This is episode number 648. The topic today <laughs> is self-love is the secret to healthy relationship. And here's why. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about, and where I'm coming from and then I'll get into the topic and explain what's going on. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's also the reason why I started doing these talks over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And now we're at episode number 648. So the topic again today is about self-love being the key to relationships or key to healthy relationships healthy being the word. And here's why. If you haven't seen my broadcast, by the way, I do these every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, Facebook Live first, then repeated on YouTube as a uh, replay. So if you're watching it there, it wasn't Facebook Live first. And if you're watching me live on Facebook, you can interact with me. If you're watching the replay, you can still interact by putting comments in. I'll respond after I sign off either way. So I've talked about this before, but I want to bring it up again because it's become a thread of conversations I've had recently. And simply put, relationship. Actually, I'm going to. Try, uh, I'm going to uh, sorry, I, I got stuck in the middle of going. Where do I want to go with this angle? Let me try the other way around. All right. Relationship is not designed for you to feel more loved. Oh my God! Did I say that? Yes, I did. Um, we've been taught by society to think that we get into relationship to be loved by somebody else. It's not quite right. And I want to say it this way because, <laughs> first of all, if we get into a relationship to be loved by somebody else, what are they in the relationship for? They're not there to love us either. We should be there to love them. I mean, it should be reciprocal. That, that's, a, that's a should starting point. So if that's the case, where do you love from? And where do they love from? Because the thing is, if they're just, they're just there to get love, which some people do in relationships, which is very, um, actually narcissistic, to be honest, because it's feeding them their own need. It's like an energy vampire. And that's a whole other conversation I'll get to another time. I've done it before. But the trap we fall into is that we think that we'll be loved by somebody else and we'll feel better. And the reality is, it's really from our own sense of love that we find relationship working. Because I did say in the title, healthy relationship, and I meant that intentionally because the healthy relationship is the fact that it's two participants contributing their love to the relationship versus one giving and one taking. And if, you, if you've been in relationships like I've been in the past sometimes, there have been relationships where one gives, one takes. That, that's basically a one-way street that goes nowhere and eventually gets drained because there's nowhere to, you can't, it's not an infinite supply. But if you're both in a relationship, we both contribute by giving love and sharing love, the relationship becomes more expansive, more fulfilling, and you're both benefiting from it because you're both filling up your own sources. So self-love is a key component. It may not be, in fact, I sometimes think about it, it is the main key component of why relationships work is when you love yourself first. Thank you, Della. Yes, I'm glad you agree with me. And I saw, I saw uh, Evie tapping away the hearts there, so thank you for that as well. So thank you, Evie. Um, and so I want to make this point clear maybe once and for all, because I'm not, it's not the first time I've talked about this, but I want to make sure this point gets clear this time, which is we keep thinking when we find somebody else, we'll feel love. When we find somebody else, they'll make us feel whole. When we find somebody else, they'll love us enough to make us feel happy. It's a lie, I'm afraid. It's a absolute lie. Now, unfortunately, we've been taught that lie by a lot of what modern society does, which is give us songs and articles and movies that portray that delusional focus and it's not true the tr the most potent effective way to get to a healthy relationship is by having a healthy relationship with yourself first not no no <laughs> thank you Eve, for that agreement i appreciate that <laughs> and i just saw nancy and are you back in town did you get back finally i'm hoping you did you got your flight back from out from uh, london um back in track. Sorry, I'm like all of them following people, saying hi to people. Yes. Hi, Nancy. I'm glad you're back. Um, 
so this thing that we do in relationships where we think that the other person is going to provide those things we don't have for ourselves, first of all, is a negative demand. Oh, you're in, you're in Facebook Live jail again? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think it only happens in that Facebook group because I don't have a problem. I didn't have any problems elsewhere before that. So, yeah, no, I understand. It's okay. I appreciate that. Thank you, Nancy, and I'm glad you're back. <laughs> yeah, the Facebook jail thing is becoming annoying. I don't know if it, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a new feature, feature they added to keep it more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To stop people from overdoing it or from the bots from doing it, over, overdoing it. Anyway, back on the topic at hand. <laughs> I'm just looking at which option, I'm weighing options to throw on the table. One of the biggest things that I know we fall in the trap of is that we fall into this thing that relationships going to make us better because we're not doing it on our own. And that is a really, I must say heinous, but certainly it's an error in approach. Because as human beings, we are not lacking anything. I just posted early today, actually, it's a principle from my book, is that relationships are not 50-50, they're 100, 100. But we tend to contribute to relationships like when it is 50-50, which is a mistaken approach. And what I mean by 50-50, 100-100 means that when we think the other person is going to fill us up, make us feel complete, fill up the gaps we think we're carrying around, first of all, putting a lot of weight on that person's shoulders. And secondly, we're not taking responsibility for our part in that relationship. And that's not healthy. When you love yourself, when you remember that you are whole, when you support yourself in being fulfilled, complete as you are, first of all, you take the pressure off the other person to have the relationship work. Secondly, it makes you more attractive to a relationship as well. Evie was say, oh, yeah. rom-coms are a lie. Yes, indeed they are. You attract what you are, yes. No, no, Evie, you, you, you can mention it too. It's no problem. If you repeat what I said or say ahead of me, that's fine too. It is true. We do attract what we are, but also we attract, well, we tend to attract codependence when we are codependent ourselves. And that's the thing. Most romantic comedies, rom-coms, as you put it, are in fact predicated and they get their humor from codependence. That should be telling you right there how um, ineffective and, and incorrect it is. Not saying relationships can't be fun and joyful, but they're much more fun and joyful when there's no stress and no draining on them. So when you love yourself first, when you go into a relationship, first of all, the other person does not have to fill you up, you're already full. But when they do love you, they add to what you already are, which is much more fulfilling. It's an overflow, it's an abundance, you know. Oh, you root for cheaters. Yeah, exactly, Yubi, that's true, yes. I have seen, yeah, I'm not gonna go there. Um, <laughs> no, I'm leaving that one alone. All right, staying on, staying true to the topic at hand, <laughs> attempting to here. The true mistake people make is they don't think that they can love themselves first. They believe that love only comes to them from outside versus from inside going out. And we have it backwards. The reality is that we can only love somebody else when we love ourselves. But when we start loving the other person thinking that they will love us back, we are in a codependent um, draining effort to try and get something we don't really already have. But the reality is loving ourselves first is the key. The other part of that is when you do love yourself first, you don't even need relationship, which makes relationships much more fun. Because that neediness for relationship is a trap that we fall into because somehow we have to put dependence on that person and make them in control of our feelings. That's the whole codependent thing I've talked about before. When you love yourself fully first, a partner you come together with adds to that and you have a lot of fun and freedom in relationship. Yes, there's freedom in relationship when you do it from a place of wholeness. It also makes for a much more expansive experience in relationship because there is a wholeness that happens. You know, the gestalt is basically the, where, where the sum is greater, is, is sorry, where the, where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. The same is true in a relationship. When you're both coming from places of love, from overflow, and you're actually filled up first, then the gestalt of the relationship is much greater than the individual parts. It becomes a much greater experience, a greater fulfillment, a greater joy, a greater love, a greater expression of your relationship. But it does require self-love first. And, side, bit, side note, when you do love yourself first, when you do love yourself before you get into a relationship, you also too choose to choose to, excuse me, you also tend to choose a better quality of partner who is also loving themselves first too. Because when you come from a place where you are loving yourself first, 
you'll be able to sense, intuit, pick up, be very aware of those people who don't love themselves, and you'll walk away. Because you don't really want to go with somebody who's going to drain you. That's because what that's what the negative part side of that is. Same as if you find somebody who's fully loving, you're not loving yourself, you do the same thing to them and they will walk away. So love yourself first, become whole and complete as who you are, and then from that place you can love other people more, more easily, more effortlessly. And by the way, it also improves all of your friendships as well. Because when you come from a place of wholeness, your friends trust you more. When you love yourself and you're in full up with who you are, the people around you actually like you more. Strange that sounds. So self-love is a key for all relationships, including if you're a parent, if you're a child, your best friends, your siblings, and romantic relationships. It covers everything. Yet we don't talk about it enough. But it really is something that I recommend highly that you practice yourself, however you do that. Now, little promotion, little plug, because it's my broadcast, I can do that. I've, for a long time, I've told my clients one of the best homework assignments I've given them is to practice loving themselves. And to make it easier, I actually created a guided meditation, which is actually two audio tracks that I actually guide you through loving yourself using a mirror. But it's also, um, for, the, for my female clients, they seem to love that a lot more. So I decided not just to do written format, but to do an audio format too. So I have a self-love practice, a guided self-love meditation practice that I'm going to put the link in the comments for if you're looking for some practice steps, key things to work on your own self-love. You'll have my voice in your ear if you like that sort of thing. And if you don't, you can just read the, read the, the, um, the guidebook as well. But it's the thing I recommend doing. And if you other ways you do self-love, then recommend doing that too. But if you just wanted to add some, a new self-love practice, new self-love skill, I'll put the link in the comments um, because it'll help you. I'll also actually put a link in the comments for my book since I mentioned it earlier too, because that 50-50, 100-100 relationship thing with the codependence versus interdependence is a big part of healthy relationships. And that's a few chapters in my book that'll help you. So I'll put both those links in the comments. Um, I'm going to sign off. Yes, I have to sign off because I've got to, got to head out in a minute. But I wanted to give you that nugget, that insight and that reminder because you may have forgotten, or maybe you know somebody who has forgotten this and needs to see this, so please share it with them. It really is the cornerstone. It is the key, probably the biggest key to have a healthy relationship with everybody and anybody. So self-love first, always. All right. So again, I mentioned at the beginning, this is a Facebook Live video from my personal page first, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and also go to my YouTube channel. So please like my Facebook page, and also on YouTube, you can follow me, you can actually subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, where you can watch these broadcasts from newest to oldest. I hope this has made sense to you. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below. If you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them. And uh, if you like my broadcast, you want to come watch me tomorrow, I'll be here at 5 p.m. Pacific time, as usual. And uh, some new topic to talk about. But again, love yourself first. Take care of yourself first. You'll create a better relationship with yourself and a better relationship with everybody else. And with that, I thank you for watching. And if you, by the way, your homework tonight, I'm going to give you homework, is to look at ways you can love yourself more. Whether you use my self-love practice or not, how can you love yourself more? That's my question to you. If you want to put them in the comments below, I welcome that as well. So thank you for being with me. I will see you again this time tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on this page. Take care of yourself.